Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 12th episode, 12th episode of Tissues wow. of the Day, a comedy show about <laughs> queer culture and relationships. My name is David, and my co-host is Robert McCaa. And we are joined today by our special guest, Amr Khan. Hello, Amr. Hi, everybody. Welcome, Amr. How's everyone doing? Oh, you know, I don't know if they, I don't know if they can respond. Yeah, you just pose that question to the world, <laughs> to the internet. Yeah, I just pose it to oh, you guys. Oh, good, too, good, good. Actually. <laughs> we are we are well. I'm very sweaty. My room is going to be so hot this summer. How are you, Robert? Nice. It's actually his Zoom title right now. It's sweaty. That's how mm-hmm. sweaty he is. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Right, cool. <laughs> uh, I am doing well. I am currently with family, and I am so on the island and relaxing and lovely. Mm. Ah. Mm. Um, today's episode is about the gut, <laughs> the butt, <gasps> and the penis. Ah! Get ready, mom, dad, and family members. This is not the episode yeah. you want to listen to. This is why. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Sh- yeah, I'm not sharing this in Pakistan for sure. No. Yeah. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh my god. Can we talk about that? Like, would? Yeah, we could talk about that would too. For sure. You get in trouble if like you were in Pakistan and like it got out that you were openly talking about this stuff? I don't know. I, uh, it depends on who listens to it. Mm-hmm. If it's my family, they probably will, some of them will probably be a little concerned mm-hmm. about the content, mm-hmm. but um, but then again, you know, the, some people, there there is material out there which will offend people regardless of what it is. So at that same point, like, yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I'm like, I'm not there, so I'm happier to do it here. I would not do this if I were in Pakistan. Mm. So it would be it's, a little, the, the conversation would be very different. It's so funny how, like, you know, you bring that up, because I literally am, this is the first day I have with family, and this is the day that I'm recording this episode. So yeah, if you, yeah. but as opposed to, like, gasps you'll hear from my family somewhere in the background, if my mom hears it, she'll just laugh. You'll hear a... <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'm kind of glad. Your own laugh track. I'm kind of glad my roommate is out at the moment. So I don't know. It's not even that big of a deal. I'm not terribly shy about that <laughs> stuff because my roommate mm. is also gay and male. So I think he would understand. But um, it's just it's just nice having that. It's like it's like I want my privacy so that I can talk to people publicly. <laughs> it's like cause this is going out there. Anyway. Um, so, Amr, to sort of break the ice and uh, feel, you know, more ready, get the creative juices flowing, we do our rapid fire questions where we put you in the hot seat. Are you ready to be in the hot seat? Let's do it. Okay, cool. Are you ready, Robert? I'm ready. All right. And you can give as short answers uh, as you possibly can. We'll try to go as quick as possible. So, okay. books or films? Films. Pie or cake? Cake. Short partners or tall partners? Uh, tall partners. If you were an animal, what would it be? I would be, for some reason, lemur came to my mind right <laughs> good, away. Good, <laughs> keep going. Uh, vanilla or chocolate? Uh, chocolate. Favorite song right now? Uh, oh my gosh. Is uh, There's a Bollywood song coming on and I'm dancing to it. Nadia Pars. And it's just, yeah, that's the one I'm listening to all the time. So. Yes. What is a pet peeve of yours? Uh, people who come short late and then they don't apologize. I understand people are late, but then they don't apologize. They're like, oh, yeah, then this is what we do. And I'm like, mm, no. Mm. Vibrator or dildo? Uh, no, no, neither. I prefer the real <laughs> thing. Yes. What made you smile today? Uh, this, I'm looking forward to this, actually. This made me really smile. I was happy to see you guys. In one word, describe your aesthetic. Uh, orange. <laughs> nice. Uh, what do you hope to get out of this podcast? Uh, <laughs> something to leave with my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> what keeps you up at night other than a man? Uh... It's right now. It's just uh, I, I, keep, I sleep early, so I wake up early. So I think I wake up early because I sleep early. So that's the answer. I don't know. When are you most likely to be fake, quote unquote? When am I most? Uh, actually, when I am meeting people and they were trying to meet people for the first time, and then they want to hug me, and I'm just like, I'm not. I don't know how to. So I'm just very fake in that situation. But I'm just like, I don't know how to communicate that. I don't want to hug you. Driver or passenger? 
Oh, driven. Are Let's you, end it there. This makes so much yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> this makes so much Amazing. sense. Um, now, very interesting. I, I wanted to ask, like, uh, nope, I've lost it. I've lost the thread. Robert, Robert, take control. <laughs> okay, well, this is based off some of those answers. First and foremost, we already know why Amr prefers being a passenger over a driver. <laughs> Shut up, but... Robert. It's, there's no shame in it, Robert. No, no Get shame over it. it. <laughs> um, but I found it interesting, the Bollywood answer. I'm, I'm curious, of, mm. like, have any Bollywood-related dancing, have you ever taken a class? Has it just been purely from watching stuff where where does bollywood dancing come from for you uh, purely from watching okay. yeah grew growing up in pakistan and bollywood the film industry out of india it's is huge and it's such a big part of or the pakistani culture too because the song the dance mm-hmm. so and singing and just music is a big part of our family life too so yeah so bother watching movies and then dancing normally we do do a lot of dancing at the weddings so and then we try to copy the dance moves and mm. recreate those kind of scenarios it's just a lot of fun and people really get into it so yeah that's a lot and then yeah my morning is listening to a lot of songs from bollywood a lot of songs from pakistani music mm. and that's just my morning I just have it on playing while i'm getting ready getting my breakfast sometimes even i'm doing my workout at home it's just playing Ooh. until i get like until i have to turn it off to so, work yeah. out that'd be fun that does sound really yeah, fun. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Now, yeah. uh, forgive my ignorance, but is the language the same within Pakistan and Bollywood films? Uh-oh. Uh, Throw up a big warning can... sign right now. Yeah. Lack of <laughs> no, education. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's just because it's uh, in the language in Indian movies is mostly Hindi. Mm-hmm. And Hindi, I can understand. I can't write Hindi. The script yeah. is very different. Uh, but Urdu and Hindi, Urdu is what we speak in yeah. Pakistan. It's very similar. Uh, some of the words are the same. So I can understand them uh, for sure. They use actually a lot of uh, dialogues are written in Urdu. A lot of the poetry and songs in some of the movies is also written in Urdu. So it's kind of, yeah, it's very familiar. So I understand. Very cool. Yeah. Speaking That's of right. education, it's good yeah. friends like Amr who, ta- you know, taught me about things like when I would go to him and be like, hey, do you want a chai tea? He's like, you know, you're just saying tea twice. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so he's he's educated <laughs> yeah. me on many other things. That's great. That is a pet peeve of mine, too. Like when, like, you want to get a chai tea latte? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and then people who just, yeah, like coming out of a yoga thing and then they're like, I can see your chakras or whatever. Oh, no. And I'm like, can you? Oh, no. Can you? And I'm just like, I've had that experience. I'm not, a, I don't go to yoga classes. So I've had that experience when I have shown up back in the early 2000s when it was a new thing and validate everybody else's experience because I'm the brown guy attending mm. <laughs> a yoga class. They're like, oh, this must be a good class. The actual people from that part of the world are taking the class. I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah, that has happened. Yeah. Um, are there any, like, ugh, what's even the right way to say it? You know, I, I'll, I'll cut this out if this is bad, but like, are there any just more like brown people in yoga classes or has it become a very gentrified oh, yeah. thing? Oh, okay. No, it is. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a fantastic workout. Yeah. It is a fantastic workout. It's a great way to meditate. I totally, I totally, yeah, this is, this is a great way to do it. But it's just kind of like, I just feel like some people are trying too hard. That's when I'm just like, when they're trying too yeah. hard to be like, oh, I understand yeah. this. I'm like, great. I get it, but you, then they're just trying too hard, and I'm just like, this is a little too much for me. I'm just like, yeah, I, then it's being fake, like what we talked about. And yeah. like, yeah, this is being fake. Did you know yeah. that, I like, Amr like... actually originated the downward dog? <laughs> <laughs> Originally, it's called the downward pig, and then they were like, that's just too Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of ironic because I am I was raised Muslim, and we don't do oh. pigs in our, in our yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. This is maybe this is too much, but like, do you have you stuck to any of those like customs uh, as far as like not eating pig or not eating uh, particular things? This is definitely going to get me into trouble, but yeah, no, I eat everything. Yeah. Uh, I am not supposed to eat uh, pork or anything related to pork, but I'm comfortable eating it. I'm okay with that. I'm also, yeah, so it's not a, it's not a problem for me. Um, it's a personal choice for me. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. He's yeah, on wow. keto. 
I'm on keto oh, nice. too. So yeah, I've lost like 40 pounds since last year because I was just like, I need to kind of change the way I move and I wanted to feel better. So yeah. Oh my God. That's insane. That's so 40 cool. pounds. Congratulations. Claps to him. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm a stress eater too. So I kind of mm. remember January 6th is when I had the last piece of fried chicken from Juke. Um. <laughs> and then it's uh, not until this year I had Juke this year for the first time in the over a year. Wow. Juke is a fried chicken place. Great. So I'm giving it like a wow. shout out to them too right now. It's yeah. kind of interesting. We never, but, we never yeah. market anything on this channel. Bubbly. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, this episode is brought to you by Twining's Tea. <laughs> oh, Twining's. You make my and heart then Caprina, sore. And Caprina Fresh Ooh. Goat's Milk Hand. <laughs> you really do use all the animals, don't you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, it's wasteful otherwise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the deep dive, the deep questions of the show. So okay. let's just kick it off. Boys. Does size matter? Oh, okay. I want a <laughs> countdown, and I want us to all answer at the same time. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the all yes right. or no, or 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 whatever's in between. <laughs> countdown from three. Everybody ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. Three. It's after after three. So after the after, after the one. After the one. Yep. Three. Two, yes. It, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> three. Two. One. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> And Robert says no. no. Wow. This is great. This is going to be good. Wait, we had two yeses and a no? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go into it. <laughs> Who first? Well, that's what he okay, said. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, I'll go first because I feel like this is controversial or something. Okay, so I, I will expand just to say that, like, the most important thing is compatibility. So, like, if I am not compatible with someone that could mean they are either too big or too small which means that size does matter like i can have fun with that person but like we have to be able to talk about it and like respect each other's limitations um yeah that's my little intro we can get more into it how about you robert okay. um so i said no because i would say generally speaking no because i think there is this stigma for men and for women that one part of our genitalia is size matters and mm. i don't think it does i think it's more about the full experience of sex all the elements that make up sex and it's not just about that one thing and the size in particular of it but i agree with you that yes compatibility definitely matters right and so we can go more into that but my just general statement is that i have had everything on the spectrum and i have generally found that what matters the most is the full package of the sexual experience not just that one element hmm. Armor. interesting i've i've you know i've heard I use this uh, photo, it's not the pen, but the penmanship, mm -hmm. but the pen helps, but the pen helps too. Mm, so cool. it's a confidence with it, right? So um, yeah, I mean, I think I agree now hearing David and also hearing you, I'm like, I understand what you're saying. And I think I, for me, it's not just, I understand like it's a whole thing that you're doing, but it's then as like you're having sex and it, it's that whole experience you're having. But if I, I actually kind of break it down more, I'm just like, if it's just that for, for what I'm having fun with, if it's anal sex, oral sex or whatever it is, then where, what does that matter for me there? Yes or no. That's how for me, it's even to that point. So point. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's where I kind of like, I, for me, it's very different when I think about it. For me, it's, for me, sex is very different from an emotional connection too. So for me, I connect to it very differently. It could be a very emotional connection and it could be a very physical connection mm. too. So, uh, and it can be both at the same do time. Do you not, so it depends. Do you not agree Sorry. though that like sex always has some level of emotions attached to it or can you, ha do you have scenarios where it's like not even part of the equation? Yeah. I have scenarios where it's not in parts. So it could be a total need thing too. So okay. yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I, it's, and it, it's not that it can't be, it can be both too. Mm. So, so I'm on that. It depends on what you want that person with, from that person or what you and that person want. Like I've known, I've known partners who have just have sex because it is a need for them too at that time. And this is not an emotional thing. It was just something mm -hmm. too. So it could happen within couples too. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah mm. I definitely, uh, 
agree with a lot of that stuff because the so there's a great book called sexual intelligence by marty klein um that talks mm -hmm. about all of this stuff it talks about like this over pressure from society that like sex is supposed to like look a certain way um because of people's you know uh because of porn because of uh mm. movies because of uh, photography like even like Models. cologne and fucking like perfume advertisements like is mm. like it's all sexual like it's all around us and so I think we get this message that yeah sex is supposed to look a certain way and it's supposed to like um yeah and that like size is supposed to matter as far as like you know bigger is always better which again is not true it's just not this idea fair. of yeah. compatibility and uh definitely the idea of like emotional connection versus that like physical experience i think is really important and just to like know what you're getting into whenever you have a sexual experience um like when i was sort of on my rebound last summer um i made a very specific goal to never get like emotional support from people i was hooking up with to like just leave mm. that for my friendships and like mm. otherwise my personal mm -hmm. life was out of it because I just did not want those wires crossed. Like I was too vulnerable, you know? Gosh, um, this is why Dave and I are never having sex because we have given yeah. so much emotional support to each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, would, it would cross the wires. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cross the streams. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to mention too of like, you know, there, there's this uh, complication sometimes with gay sex where it's like, there are strict tops, strict bottoms, people who are averse or like lean one way more than the other. Um, but you can have like strict bottoms perhaps who maybe have a smaller butthole and it actually is very difficult for them to um, like to bottom for everybody. So that becomes a whole conversation of like, are they, can they work through being really into this person but not always being able to bottom for them mm. or what like what's the next step you know i think that's part of the compatibility equation you brought up yeah you know yeah like, there's there's two major things that i think one the size thing even if you ex um, extend it outside of genitalia right there is this concept generally speaking of bigger is better right a uh, bigger car bigger house oh god um, bigger property um a, a bigger guy bigger muscles right uh bigger eyes um <laughs> but <laughs> heaven forbid you have a large body <laughs> yeah. it better be muscly if it's big um but for the most part there's this general concept of larger and i think that extends into the sexual experience right um uh -huh. but the uh second aspect of it that i was going to say is that i'm like i think also it extends into both ends of the spectrum um, when you're talking about the penis is because um there is like too big where like to me it's almost like you need to have it's almost like if you're on two ends of the extreme of the like compatibility side if you're on either mm -hmm. end of the spectrum either being too small or too large there is a factor of like you have to I feel almost work harder in terms of the whole sexual experience because that can become problematic, right? Where it's, yeah, it's just not as pleasurable or it's like kind of painful, you know? Yeah. So I feel like there there is something that is almost like all the more reason why when you were talking about size, you know, if you're in one of the extremes, you got to make sure you work um, the entire sexual experience because that's going to be a potential barrier for you, especially when you throw in compatibility. Yeah. I think a lot of it also comes down to communication between your partner mm -hmm. too. Like if you are in that moment and you could be with that person forever and then, but if you're in that moment and you're not comfortable doing that, because there's something going on emotionally, physically with you, I think key is communication yes. saying, I'm into this moment, I'm not into this moment. And there, and I think that's for me. That's why it becomes very different. Where I'm just like, I'm into this moment for this purpose. Like I'm into this moment for an emotional need, for a physical need. Yeah. I'm into this moment just because I want to be here for you, for that person yeah. too. So, like, so it's for me. And I've learned that from because I, I was in a relationship where communication was uh, not was not, uh, not. Yeah, we were not communicating. I guess that's the way. And it was not, and the onus is not on him. The onus is on me too. So we were both not communicating. Or we were not communicating effectively. Yeah. And that's why there was a lack of sexual chemistry between us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's. I, and that led, yeah, yeah, that led into our personal lives too. So, and that's, and then it became bigger than what it was. But that's the whole thing. Like you, like the, 
everything else checked in our boxes. Like we were like, he was the kind of person I thought I would be really into. I was the kind of person he thought he'd be really into. So when we did, and we were together for six years, but it then it didn't just did it did not click on that very basic yeah. level. So, I, and I think that was because communication. Really, really good point. I think Omar brings up is communication is key. Even I find even if it's like a one night stand, right? Like there's something about like if you communicate sort of like i like this i don't like this more of this less of this you know your own body and you know your own <laughs> sexual experience and a lot of people yeah. i think are very afraid of it especially on a first time encounter to just be like no slow that roll or yeah more of that yeah. you know and it really does make a big difference because you will never know what the other person wants or thinks until you communicate so then throw that into the extended uh, uh, an extended relationship all the more reason right because mm -hmm. then like everything else opens up so your communication better also yeah. 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 I feel like I haven't, I don't know if I've said this before on the podcast, but like it's so important to know your yeses as well as your noes, you know? So, mm. like, if you can encourage people when they're doing the right things, especially in bed, like, not only will you get more out of it, very likely they'll get a lot more out of it too, because I don't know how, like, how much givers we are, but like, <laughs> when you know you're making somebody happy, like, that feels really good. Yeah. Oh, so, David, David's I mean, totally known. Like, at the beginning of sex, he pulls down this scroll on his wall. It's like, here's yeah. a list of yeses, <laughs> and here's a yeah. list of noes. Yeah, exactly. And here's a list of noses. And then it's just a poster yeah. of my favorite actor's noses. noses. I, like, I like this one. I like. Um, this is going to be a hilarious, funny story that I have shared with a lot of people back in the day when I did hook up with, uh, and I was, this is when I was even, when I moved here, I was 30 years old. I was kind of dating with this person. A little, he was actually my age at that time. So he was 40 something. And he was all into like, you know, like daddy thing. And I'm just like, I just never, I'm not a verbal person and I'm not into that. And, but I was like, he's into it. So let's just play along. Uh -huh. Let's see what happens. So we, and then he's like, and like, we'd be hanging out on like, you know, I'm having, and then like, do you like this? Do you like this for daddy? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, I don't know. And then one day I was, and it was, this was like a month into it. And I'm just like, okay. And we've been seeing each other very regularly, like a few times a week. And he's like into this. And he's like, all of a sudden he would just snap. And I'm like into that whole daddy thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing this now. Then I wasn't comfortable enough to tell him like, I'm not really following along so can we talk about this but then and me being the stupid funny guy i am in an intimate moment when he is you know right in the middle of his like he's just like hey who's your daddy who's your daddy and i just turn around and tell him mr khan do you know him uh, <laughs> wow and then ah. he was <laughs> yeah he was so upset about uh, that and i just started laughing too because uh, i was just like oh my god wow. and then he just literally like yeah we stopped what we were doing and he left shortly after and i have run into him we wave each other and like hi how are you but never have communicated Oof. to each other after that wow so and that's part of like going it's a funny anecdote but it's like I should have communicated better oh, that yeah. this is not I'm into. So yeah. Yeah, and it's just like talk about non compatibility or whatever. Because it's like, you know, on the one hand, yes, that's like a really hard experience for the both of you. Um literally on the other, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was until it wasn't. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, like if there's not even a shared understanding of like how that is like kind of funny, maybe a little funny, um, then you're not necessarily sharing a sense of humor. And Robert mm. and I have talked about this at length mm. where like if you can't necessarily laugh at the same things, um, that can be really yeah. hard too. Because like for you as well, we haven't even touched on it, but for Amr, like comedy is a huge part of your life. Yeah. It is, uh, I mean, that's how I know you guys. Yeah. Like we do improv. Yeah. People constantly, we constantly laugh when they see Amr. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then they're like, oh, you're not Robert. Uh, oh, shut oh. Up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what his name means. It's Amr constantly laughing. <laughs> no, I mean, comedy is a big part. Uh, and big part of improv is connecting with people. And that's, and, but then you have to realize improv is all about like connecting and making the other person look good, making the other person comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, like how I've started 
like you know like using so much of that in my day-to-day life with with relationships i have with professional relationships that i have and yeah communication is that that's the whole thing and like conveying how i'm feeling like not like i realized after a six-year marriage and a bad divorce that i'm not a hugger <laughs> so, like, mm. i had no idea that i was not a hugger and i'm not, and not just saying i like to hug people i know like, you know, I like you guys, I would hug you guys if I could, because of the pandemic, we can't. But, but then if you meet with people who we meet for the first time, as soon as they find out if you are a gay man, and if you're like a gay big man like me, they're like, oh, he's cuddly. Mm. They'll just approach you to hug you right away. Oh, I'm a hugger. And I'm like, I'm a licker. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Do you oh, want to wow. do this? I'm like, oh. Well, Amr, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to be a hugger when you're facing away from the guy most of the time. <laughs> yeah. We're hugging something, Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's bring this conversation a little north on the body because there's uh, other elements to this, right? Yeah. yeah, there's so so there's food. So with butt health, there is also gut health. Mm-hmm. Um it is very important to talk about. Uh and for so I'll just like open the floor and just like talk about myself for a second is I have celiac disease. So I'm allergic to gluten and I cannot um, if I have gluten, I'll get the runs. I'm, I'm sorry for the graphic imagery, but prepare yourself, everybody. It's going to go there. Um, and yeah. if I have yeah. any like gluten in my system or whatever, uh, it's just a bad bowel movement. And if I'm bottoming, if I'm using toys or whatever, um, it's messy. I, I will use the term painted from this, to- this point forward. Um, and like, it's just a pain. <laughs> uh to paint (laughs) because like it yeah it's just it's just a mess and oh and my connection is unstable (laughs) of course now uh so as far as foods and supplements the only thing that works for me is um staying gluten free and uh psyllium husk has been like the best thing and it only requires a little bit because then it can go too far the other way where it becomes constipation and that's a whole other like bag um Someone else go next. I won't. I won't <laughs> volunteer yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting. Like, yeah, I mean, I want a different diet too, and I'm on. A, I'm more like, yeah, I'm prepared. I'm always prepared if I'm going to have sex, and then I'm also prepared. If accidents will happen, so I don't know. And I initially, in my when I was discovering sex. It was very awkward when the accidents have happened, but now it's more like, okay. And if somebody who, and it, you know, it does kill the mood, but if it doesn't, it doesn't, but you're able to talk about it. Yeah. You're like, okay, this happened. Let's just talk about it. And let's, and let's just check in. Yeah. Like, do you, how do you feel? Yeah. But it's not, I, there was a shame around it and I'm not ashamed of it. So I'm just like, yeah, this is going to happen. Well, you try doing that. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So there's a shame. And like, yeah, there are people who d- diets do matter. Like, you know, they, you're eating certain kinds of food. But at the same time, you like the experience of it matters too. And like, just say I was on a date or, uh, yeah, I was on a date. I think, I don't know, a few couple of months ago. And then at the end of the night, we thought we were going to get intimate. And the person was just like, I'm about to, I could see from his body language, like the food that we had ordered is not agreeing with him. Mm-hmm. And he wants me to leave his place. So I'm just like, all right, I guess I should go. And then we talk about the next day. And he's like, as soon as you left, he's just like, I'm running out of the bathroom. Yeah. And I'm like, kind of glad I left then. <laughs> and I'm like, like, this is going to be weird. So yeah, yeah just talking about, yeah, but I mean, things happen and like, if it's going to get messy, then it'll get messy. It depends on, yeah, how prepared you are. Just be like, this is going to be weird. Yeah. Let's not do this. So, yeah. yeah. Two, two key things, recurring things, themes I'm hearing here is one, communication, and two, the fact that we're talking about it. Like, the reason we're bringing this up even and why I think it's good to discuss this is because you have to normalize it and you have to destigmatize yeah. it. Um, and yeah. communication is so key, just like the rest of the sexual experience. If something goes wrong, talk about it and, and know yeah. that probably that other person went through it at some point in their sexual um timeline yeah. right they've experienced this so it's not out of the ordinary and it's just something we as gay men just gotta deal with and other people who participate yeah. in that type of sex um but like it's just yeah it's so key and for me i um unlike the two of you i have no dietary restrictions other than an allergy to nuts and fortunately <laughs> not those kind of nuts. 
<laughs> Robert, you're such a liar. No, I do. I l- <laughs> We've seen you hanging below nuts all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Actual plant-based yeah. nuts. <laughs> that would be like God's cruel joke to me. If, so no if, vegans? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No vegans. Yeah. Yeah, no vegans. <laughs> Robert has an allergic reaction fetish. I don't get off unless I can't breathe <laughs> because of hives. <laughs> I want to see your air p- passage close up. Uh, no, it's like just I know. a Sorry, bunch no. of, you know, plant nuts. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if I could, I, I, I would become a nun or a, a hermit if I was allergic to males, men's nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, so uh, I pretty much have no restrictions in that regard, but I completely agree with David. The key thing that I discovered, and more recently, psyllium husk. It's amazing. A friend of mine actually introduced me. He's like, hey, ch- check out this like pure by men or whatever. It's some like, you know, little ca- um, container of like, 20 pills that he paid probably $20 on that he bought online and I look at the ingredients I'm like it's just like silly husk and a couple other things I'm like so I just buy a big old bottle of cheap silly husk works great and it's honestly it's something I will take regardless of whether or not I'm sexually active like if it's just like I have a like yeah it's great um and it's a big part of sorry no no it's just that that works really well and uh um, I'm trying to think. No, go on. I'm trying to think of other things that I take that work well. Yeah, we call it ispagol in Pakistan. Oh, cool. So it's actually a big part of our people who are, who are having dietary restrictions or dietary problems or bowel movement problems. They just take that at the end of the night and it's just like, they're like it's a big thing in our culture. <laughs> like talking about stomach Why issues. Why is that? Oh, nice. No, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with be gay or straight or queer. It's just about like stomach issues that are a big thing in our culture. So we're just, everyone's like, oh, you should have ispogol. And it's just like, hmm. put in, you can have it dry with a glass of water on top or you just mix it and make a little fluid and eat it like that. But yeah, it's Sicilian husk is huge part. And it's like, yeah, okay. Like it's a big part of being too regular. Hmm. Hmm. That's Go so cool. Faker. Okay. Um, And now this is changing gears a little bit because this is just very like overall and comprehensive, but more to just like, I don't know, destigmatize any uh, things related to sexual health. Um, Have either of you had complications related to sexual health? And what did you learn from that experience? What do you mean complications like sexual health, like as in like an STI or something like that? Yeah, so it could be an STI. It could be a particularly weird uh, sexual episode where it was just like, oh, I mean, similar to what you were sharing uh, earlier, Amr, of just like, I, you know, (laughs) I invalidated someone's like fetish and I learned a little Mm -hmm. something about that experience. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, yeah. Robert, go ahead. Yes. You must pick one. Let, me, let me get out my book. <laughs> 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 uh, day 248. Um, so, yes, I have had. Um, honestly, probably my first STI was a very scary experience. Um, having yeah. to hear about that from a doctor. I was traveling at the time. My doctor called me on the phone. And I was, li- <laughs> I was literally at a like corporate event with a bunch of like my coworkers and that my doctor like called up and I like almost took the call right there that was like this might go awry so I decided to step outside and I was like hi what's up and I'm like usually call from your doctor's bad like no news or good news when it comes to doctors so I was like what's up and she's like um yeah so you caught an STI and you know I'm gonna I have to like give you a prescription and so I just like immediately was mortified right I was like oh it's like end of the world don't know what's going on and um and she's like Robert don't worry she's like this is the common colds of STI <laughs> it's like it's very normal <laughs> yeah she cold. literally called it that she's like it's okay it's fine okay. you take this one antibiotic and you're good um and she like sent it I was like in another province she sent it to a pharmacy out there it was all fine it was like but like your first experience of it is is terrifying because it's like you only i I, maybe some people read into a lot of the sexual health to a great extent where they feel comfortable about everything i think it's probably in the minority i think more people engage before they know you know like we all get general sex health education but when something negative happens right it's probably going to hit you hard so it did me and i was just like i didn't know what it was but then after the fact, I then did more research and looked into it and like educated myself further more than, you know, the amount I probably should have known. And as a result, you know, like go and bo- lo and behold, education and communication helped me out. Mm. 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 So, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I yeah. think I had a similar experience. It was like, it was, <laughs> it was when I lost my virginity. I think I was so <laughs> like, uh, just inexperienced, obviously, <laughs> that like, I didn't have condoms. The guy I was with didn't have condoms. And I was just like, I just didn't, I didn't feel as strongly about my rights at that moment <laughs> um, to just be like, uh, nope, we're not going to do this without condoms. Um, and so, you know, we did the do. And uh, and then he texted me not even a week later, I think, saying that he had tested positive for chlamydia and that I should get tested. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK. Um, and at the same time, I think there was another guy I had talked to who became very like, jealous that I had slept with somebody else and I was like oh no everything is so hard as a young gay man <laughs> <laughs> my life <laughs> yeah I was just like oh I really wish I just didn't make this other guy jealous and now I'm sick it was just so like <laughs> you know you just have those experiences um but yeah so you know I did the treatment uh and it cleared up and that was all good um and yeah, I just, you know, I just learned a bit about condoms as well as like going to a clinic. Like it's great to go to a clinic for prevention as opposed to reaction mm -hmm. um, of just like, mm -hmm. oh God, okay, like uh, time to do damage control, I guess. Um, and yeah, and so I think having like a rough first experience then prepares you for the next ones. Like the first time is always the hardest. Hey, yo. Um, but like you <laughs> definitely... Uh, yeah, it becomes less scary the more you go. And Robert, my connection cut out for a second, but did you talk about prep at all? No, I did not bring it up. Would you be open to that? Ah. Yeah, yeah, we could totally talk about that. I, I'm going to bring up one story when you were mentioning first times, and I think mm. it's appropriate to the overall theme where we ask a question about size. I made probably the number one mistake you can make during gay sex. Maybe not the number one, but it's up in the top <laughs> ten. Uh, the very first time I had sex and um, I was a receiving partner uh, I said the worst thing I probably could have said I was, there was this point where like we were already engaged and I was like is it in? <laughs> Ooh. killed the mood completely wow. killed the mood and oh, because the Robert. response was just like delay and then yeah <laughs> and I was just Ooh. like oh no Okay. Never heard back from him. Had a horrible first experience. I think That's all our first wild. experiences are bad. Yeah. Uh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, I remember like you're talking about first. I, I, I still to this day I remember my first HIV test, which was back in college. I, I'm like way older than you guys, so this was in 1996. Was the Brontosaurus when, still walking and, around or? Yes, the art was just cool. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, so they, uh, I remember going to my college and they had on um, weekends, they had, oh no, so you have to wait a week to get your result. Mm. And there was this one uh, person who was, uh, he, it was sort of queer uh, men's health group who used to come to our co college clinic and do these tests. And it was such a, because he knew I was so scared. I had just come out and I was just starting to date and I just wanted to like, and I had a, like, you know, very not new to all of this too. So I was just like, okay, I need to get tested. And I just want to make sure everything is, you know, I'm fine. So it was HIV and then other STIs too, but it was just the whole week. And it was such a, like, he was, he knew I was nervous. He knew I was scared and I was still just come out or, you know, and I'm like, you know, so he actually checked in with me during the week. Because he was just like, here's my number. And he's like, he gave me his number. He's like, check in with me if you're comfortable. And I sent him, you know, I, I called him and I'm like, I'm freaking out. And he's like, okay. And then he's like, all right. Then he called me. He's like, ask permission. He's like, I'm going to call and check in with you on Thursday. I'm like, yeah, please do. And it was such a great thing because mm. at that time it was, it took a week. It was just, and, you know, I was just so unscared about talking about it. And that, like Robert said, once you have gone through that process, then you're almost like, okay, now... And that kind of put a discipline in me. Like I was like, if I'm going to be sexually active, I have to get tested. And and that now leads to prep. Like, you know, I go get prep every three months. I get tested. Same. And even, and I've kept up with it, even through the pandemic, even though I wasn't sexually active during the pandemic, 
all this is going to be over soon. Anyway, so, and then it's just, yeah, it's just one of those things. You, you keep up with it. You talk about it. Um, I had a little bit of a prep shame around it when I first got my prescription for prep because it was just one of those things like, why am I getting it? I'm like, you know, the whole thing, like, do I need it? Do I not need it? I'm taking all the precautions, but I'm just like, at the same time, it's the responsibility to myself not and and there was a selfish move to like a responsibility for myself it's something i want for myself it is nothing and then i realized it also affects other people but it had to start with me i'm like i have to do this for me and and then and now i talk about it to people i remember going on a date with this guy this is back in queer problem we were doing shows at um xy and this guy i was sharing it with the group in our check i'm like oh I went on this day with this guy and no, we were, and then we were chatting because we met on Grindr and then he was just like, and then I was like, oh, I still prefer it, like if you use condoms and he's like, oh, but I thought you were on prep. I'm like, I am, but I still want to be careful about STIs. And he was like, well, you're too crazy about it. He was like, you're too anal. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> But then I was just like, at the same time, I felt like kind of pressured about like, oh, maybe I should, you know, he's a night, he, like, I want to hook up with this guy. So should I not? But then I stuck to it. So I was just like, okay, no, I'm going to, I prefer to keep, you know, we, if you're going to have sex, we should have condoms. Mm. So it was already one of those things like talking about it and being more open about it. Wow. So, communication yeah. again yeah. comes up. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. I'm like really promoting that to <laughs> yes. the internet. No, it's great. <laughs> and yeah, this thing about, this thing about condoms, like even, you know, I think I've even talked to Robert about this where, um, I was like, do, is it still good to use condoms for oral sex? Cause I think there's like kind of a distinction, uh, for some people of like, oh, oral sex is safer. So you don't have to. Um, but then I was like with someone uh, a couple of months ago and we got flavored condoms and like did that whole thing where I was just like, it's just safer to not, <laughs> or to keep the condoms on. <laughs> Can we please, you know? Mm. Um, and yeah, you know, it's just like. I think it really could just be that the people who are like anti condom, so to speak, just haven't had the negative experiences, like haven't had the STI scares, yeah. so they just don't care. Um, which is too bad because, like, I think if there was more or if there was less of a stigma around condoms and less of a stigma around, like, no, it's up to people to, like, because uh, I'm reading about kind of the like criminalization of HIV in Canada, like, you're. There's supposedly a law, I don't know if this has changed since the printing of the book, but like if someone did not disclose their HIV status um, to someone and then uh, they find out about it later or something like that, that person who was positive could be reported and could actually have charges pressed against them. I'd never heard of this. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's awful. Um, and so, mm. it, but the My point gosh. that the author makes is it's really important to like, have responsibility on both ends. It's not just up to a person who's positive to just like tell everybody, like there should also be a culture of people asking just for the sake of asking. Like everyone should just be like that kind of transparent, should be communicative. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, to remove that kind of stigma, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I volunteered for an AIDS organization um, doing support and got a lot of education while I was there. That role, role, that rule, that law uh, had changed at a point okay. um, where it is no longer a criminal offense to not disclose. And I believe this is where it's rusty because it was quite a while ago. I believe it was around the time that they started developing a status that I think we should very much educate about on this show and people should know about is undetectable, right? So yeah. an undetectable status is you are cannot transmit. It is it's statistically, okay. medically impossible. And, um, and oddly enough, it's in the sort of discovery or eventuality of getting into the undetectable statuses, which came from um, advancements in uh, HIV medicine, and so then they developed PrEP and could, uh, they realized that, okay, not only can you be undetectable, not transmit, well, if we use this drug, you can actually build up uh, an immunity to um, uh, contracting. So PrEP basically prevents mm -hmm. you from contracting. So if you have one person who can't transmit and one person who can't contract, it's like impossible, doubly impossible, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I think in the process of that, there was a court case or something, a precedent that basically said, changed it where it was like, you can no longer, um, 
it's like it was to remove the stigma and to stop making people feel like by having this condition they're stigmatized into being like a threat to others uh yeah. this does not change the fact that i still think yes everyone should ask about statuses before they engage it's just yeah. general sexual yeah. responsibility yeah. yeah, or disclose their own, at least, mm-hmm. or disclose their preference around this, what you're going to do. Like, yeah. this is what I want to do. And if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. That's the way I, I'm more like, if you are uncomfortable with this or what I'm presenting to you, then you can say no, and I'm, I will be fine. I will, don't, we won't have to do this because it, it's part of that thing. Like, you, ha- you have to be, no is a very acceptable answer. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Just Robert, remember yeah. that? No, it's a very acceptable hey, We've got an entire episode coming up right after this. On yeah. We do. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. And um, yeah, I know I've had this partner who, <laughs> this is another overshare. Uh, hopefully my nephews and nieces are never exactly. watching this episode. We're putting a disclaimer. We're putting a disclaimer at the beginning of this episode. Yeah, yeah. but it was one of those things like I, when I'm in this and when I was with this person and I was playing then like, oh, stop, no, stop. Mm. But it was a playful, no, stop. And then he actually was like, what? Mm. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, I was just being playful. He's like, okay, I just wanted to check in with you. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> and resume. <laughs> but it was, is a really good thing that somebody Definitely. actually listened. Yeah. Right. So, and that's the thing. And then that's, and then, you know, you kind of develop that chemistry yeah. with somebody. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's, oh God, talk about communication. We put it on the list, David. That's a whole yeah. like thing of sort of like, yeah. we, we could talk about this in the next episode of like, you kind of have to be like, Hey, if I'm, this is the kind of dialogue I use. And this is what I talk about. Mm-hmm. You definitely got to mm-hmm. disclose that up front, uh, which is good. And then both partners know the thing I always found really funny about it. I'm like, well, both of you will know about this. What about your neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're particularly loud, do you need to put a sign on your door? Be like, by the way, this is yeah. happening. You know, it's like it's like what you know, uh, film shoots and they have to put signage everywhere to say, like, you know, filming's happening, there's gonna be crashing cars and guns. You'd be like, I'm having sex, so expect a lot of inappropriate words. Yeah. You know, like, so. Yeah. There there really is something to that. It's funny. I actually had this might be our last little anecdote and then we'll play a game. Um, David, are you going to talk about your new place and what you did? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, which one is more fun? Yeah, I guess this one is more fun. Um, Okay, so recently in this new place, um, I had the place to myself, but like I wasn't I still am not sure how much sound carries to the other suites next door. So I think I share a wall (laughs) with somebody else's bedroom. Um, so my roommate was out and I just had the apartment of myself. So like I masturbated, but like got really vocal, like was super into it. Um, and was just like making a lot of noise. And then the next day, um, we were like hanging something up on the wall. So it was like a totally different kind of noise. It was just hammering, (laughs) um, literal hammering. And then we get a sticky note on our door, not a knock on the door, just a sticky note on the outside of our door that we noticed later of a neighbor just being like, um, you guys are always so loud. Like, can you please keep it down? I, I'm trying to sleep. And it's like, there were just so many things wrong with that note where I was just like, I don't know that, I mean, I definitely was up late making noise in my bedroom, but we were only hanging furniture until 10 p.m., which is the noise curfew. Um, and we had only been moved in like five days. So I don't know where she got this always thing from. Um, but I immediately imagined, uh, I was like, oh, well, if she heard me, you know, yelling while I was masturbating, then <laughs> maybe she does think I'm I'm a loud person. But so so go. So basically, so be it. David, your neighbor heard two days straight of hammering. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> wow, hammering while you masturbate. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm like, how do you you're doing it very differently than the conventional yeah. way? No, Good no, I just Good use my dick as a hammer. Obviously. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> well, now we're talking about. <laughs> size okay <laughs> i'm just like wow good for you good thank you. for thank you. you i'm proud of it <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah yes good for you let's go to the next piece so the way this game works is we are going to improvise a youtube video presentation it'll be super educational super um you know just it'll show off all our skills mm-hmm. and all we need to do we're going to take turns every slide uh 
saying why this slide is really helpful for this presentation. And just for the audio mm -hmm. listeners, you can watch the video version on youtube.com slash C slash bit button, and you'll be able to check out exactly what all of these pictures were. Uh, but we will also describe them for audio listeners. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions before we start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can describe them as I generate them. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, do we have a random word? Robert, uh, rather, Amr, can you think of a random word to start us off? Slippers. Slippers. Wonderful. This is our uh, slippers inspired YouTube presentation. Um, I'll start and then Robert, then Amr, and I think we'll just go in a circle. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to tell you all about slippers. Slippers have so much so much to offer in this world. Slippers will become as indispensable as your laptop, as your sunglasses, as your uh, coffee and coaster that it's on top of, your flower, magnifying glass, paperclip. All of these things are going to join the family of Slipper as absolutely necessary. Robert? Yeah, let me expand on that. Slippers not only have practicality, they have history. They're as old as the cows in the fields. You know, we have been using these since the dawn of time to protect our feet. Some of those slippers are just smooth. Some of them are furry. And some of them stare mm -hmm. you right back in the face and they say, wear me. Amr, please tell us about the first set of slippers ever made. <laughs> uh, the first set of slippers were made barely with nothing but just sand. Ooh, it's just made with yeah, sand. It was just sand put together, and you just waited there till the tide came in, and then the sand kind of made slippers. And when the tide left, so did the slippers. There was not much left; it just withered away. The only thing you could go through that day because you had lost your slippers was a was a daiquiri. You just wanted to have that daiquiri to pull you through that moment. Oh, oh, the tide's back, the tide's back. My slippers are for me. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh, tide's gone, slippers gone. I'm gonna drink more. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that's the history of the first slipper, <laughs> David. So, as I look at this picture of a mansion in the winter time, what more of a context do you need for wearing slippers? Slippers? will keep your toesies so warm and so cozy that you won't look at winter the same way again. You will feel like you are the owner of a mansion, of your own private property, ready to host informal gatherings with daiquiris as an homage to the origin of a slipper. Robert, can you tell the kind people about where slippers are at today? Oh. They have come so far, and there's a reason why we have a young, vibrant girl leaning against a wooden fence in the middle of a forest. It's because the slipper became a modern accessory. It became something to denote how, like, vibrant, how youthful, and how exuberant you can be. L slippers are no longer just sand and royalty and looking posh. No, they're about setting a new standard, about kicking up your hind heel, pushing away the old times, those old fences that kept us separated from the rest of the world and said, you know what, world? I'm ready to show who I really am. Armor, do you remember when you bought your first pair of slippers? <laughs> I sure do. Of course I do. Of course, of course. My <laughs> first pair of slippers was when I, you know, decided to go to kindergarten with my dog, <laughs> with my dog Fluffy. So Fluffy and I decided one day, I actually want to go to kindergarten. And then my mom's just like, well, it's going to rain and you're going to ruin your slippers. So you know what I did? Guess what I did, guys? I, I put on rain boots on top oh my of my God. slippers. People were so intrigued by it. There's animation about it all over the world. Mm. It's, yeah, it's just my red ruby rain boots over my red ruby slippers. Mm. <laughs> red ruby. <laughs> that gave away a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I never found Fluffy after that. Day. Oh. oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know That's what a story for another time. Be. So in conclusion, yeah. as we look at this picture of a heteronormative couple, possibly on a date or something, 
Realize that slippers Actually, are Actually, David, everybody. I think that's a picture of you wearing your nail polish in a dress. Oh, shit. Oh, it is. <laughs> yes. And my floral dress. And yeah, for people who don't know, I, I like painting my nails. <laughs> um, and But really, slippers are for everybody. They're for men. They're for women. They're for non-binary folks. They're for people who refuse any of those labels. Because all you really got to do is slip them on. Robert, do you have any closing thoughts? Of course. I just want to say thank you to everybody out there for joining us uh, on this Slipper channel. You know, as I look upon this Victorian period woman with her hair done up in uh, braids, sitting in probably an abandoned warehouse, I feel the exact same way. I feel that Mm. slippers have enabled me to revisit my past to connect with my present and to look forward into the future, which will most likely be in an abandoned warehouse because I'm not doing well. (laughs) Amr, any last thoughts? Well, thanks, Robert. That was deep, as deep, and that made me so joyous, so joyous that I'm leaping up. I'm leaping up, and if you can see... If you could see me leaping, I'm leaping and I'm transforming into different body types. Because that's what slippers do. They transform you. They transform you into one different body type to another different body type. Slippers are for all and all for one. So that's what I just want to say. Enjoy. Be happy and rejoice in slippers. That's beautiful. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. That's the end of the game. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That was fun, guys. uh, So... Amr, thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have anything that you want to take away from this conversation? Uh, A lot. It's so good to... I'm so happy that this is such a fun, frank conversation. It was... uh, And it should be. Things like this should be openly discussed. I obviously come from a culture which is very sexually reserved. So for me, it's a huge journey for me to even talk about these things. So I'm happy to be given this opportunity. And yeah, I felt awesome talking to you guys i missed you guys i haven't i haven't seen david in over a year i saw yeah. robert recently i haven't seen david in over a year yeah, well i have uh, even before the pandemic because you moved right yeah so yeah i moved the pandemic, and yeah. now i'm back up in vancouver and i have um i have some cash to give you so we'll we'll make a date <laughs> yeah. it's for a queer prop thing <laughs> <laughs> i'm like cash <laughs> for me <laughs> um, <laughs> alright but yeah thank you so much guys yeah, thank of you course. So, so much it's a lot of fun yeah. uh, Robert did you have anything you wanted to take away I said my uh, my theme many times throughout the discussion yeah. it's communication it's Boom. communication about this topic about sex about communication to your partner uh, just like destigmatize talk about it educate yourself on it and it'll just become more normal and more fun boom I couldn't agree more, so I won't. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I will let that, awesome. let that slide. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Amr, for coming on. If you like, you can follow Amr at, at Amr in Vancouver on Instagram. You can follow me at BitButton on Twitter and on Instagram. And you can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. <laughs> Stay wet, internet. Sobbing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.